Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 6 starts now. A bombshell lawsuit filed in federal court against the Ann Arbor Public School District alleging it harassed, threatened, suspended, and ultimately fired an elementary school teacher all because of her race. A franchisee delays the scheduled opening of his restaurant in Dearborn after backlash from the Arab American community. I've received very hurtful comments. Why some members of the community are protesting the burger joint. And that tops tonight's news at six. The Lebanese American franchisee said he was too worried to open the restaurant after his kids were bullied and he received threatening messages from those opposed to the Burger Rim burger chain. Uh, it means many burgers in Hebrew. Priya Mann has a look at why the eatery has been so controversial. Sam Zar was planning to open this burger room location in two weeks. He'd already invested $180,000 in the business, but after growing backlash, he will not be opening up here along the Dearborn Detroit border. That was actually my first location I wanted to open, you know, until those problems started. Sam Zar owns this burger room franchise in Royal Oak. The company is expanding across the U.S. It started in Israel and is now headquartered in California. Sam says he was surprised by the reaction to set up shop in Dearborn. I've received very hurtful comments. You support the Israel, you, you, not, you don't support the Palestinian cause. Law professor and local activist Amr Zar, who is not related to Sam, is opposed to burger room coming to Dearborn. Obviously, the issue of Palestine is near and dear to a lot of people here in Dearborn. I wish he would have done more research and understood more the sensitivities of the community before he decided to bring that into our community. Sam also lives in Dearborn. The Lebanese-born Muslim American doesn't see the connection between his business and the conflict between Israel and Palestine. To me, burger is not going to make a difference. I don't care where it comes from. Burger, it's a burger. We in America. It doesn't matter that it's a burger joint. It could have been a burger joint. It could have been a pizza joint. It could have been anything. But this is about raising awareness of the uh, violations by Israel of international law. As word spread on social media, the comments, as you can imagine, got nasty. Sam says his children were bullied over it. I can feel, especially my older son, how hurt he is about this. Obviously, nobody should be bullied. No kids should be bullied. This is a political debate and boycott is a political tool. First of all, I really respect everybody's opinion. You know, we're here to unite people, not divide people. And I don't want a, a burger to divide people. That's why I walked away from this. And Sam is not looking back. He's focused on the future. In the next few months, he's planning to open two more locations in Redford and Oak Park. Reporting from Dearborn, I'm Priya Mann, Local 4. All right, Priya, let's move now from Dearborn to Ann Arbor, where the public school system is now the target of a new $5 million discrimination lawsuit. A principal currently on leave, so she was forced out because of her race. She's white. Let's bring in Jason Colthorpe. Jason, uh, kind of walk us through this lawsuit here. Yeah, and I have a copy of it right here. Parents at Lawton Elementary School in Ar Ann Arbor were already curious as to what was going on when it was announced their principal was taking an indefinite leave with a month to go in the school year. Now the answer in this lawsuit, alleging she was the victim of reverse discrimination. The federal lawsuit names the Ann Arbor Public School District, its Board of Education, and six other administrators in an unusual discrimination case. Shannon Blick, the former principal at Lawton Elementary, alleges she was harassed, berated, lied to, humiliated, threatened, and ultimately suspended without notice or cause and constructively terminated because of her Caucasian race. The lawsuit also states on April 26th, Blick was placed on administrative leave and was barred from any events on school property, including her child's fifth grade graduation. And on May 7th, a day before some parents were planning to speak on her behalf at a public school board meeting, Blick was asked to tell them not to. I've never had a case that was this extreme. Blick's attorney, Will Tishkoff, has won cases like this before, one against the school district, with the big difference being those clients were black. But he says discrimination is colorblind. I feel no differently about my white client than I did my black client in, in Ohio. Either way, we still have a school district, in my view, that needs to act within the law. Blick took over as principal here at Lawton Elementary in 2013, and by most accounts, things were going very well until the district reassigned an assistant principal here to work under her, an assistant principal who is black and, according to the lawsuit, wanted Blick's job. She went from being the star-loved principal overnight 
things changed. When I reached out to the district, I was told, quote, the Ann Arbor Public Schools has not been served with a copy of the complaint and the AAPS does not comment on pending litigation on personnel matters. Just a footnote here, the same HR director named in this lawsuit was the HR director at Van Buren Public Schools when it was sued by four teachers for rights violations, a story we covered. That case was settled for $720,000. Yeah. number of wrinkles to this. Yeah, there it? are. And I should point out that I did talk to several parents, many of whom uh, uh, some support her, but I got an email back late today of somebody who says that she also was great to students and parents, but to the staff, it was a much different story, and maybe that had something uh, to do interesting. with it. Interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah a lot of wrinkles. Okay, thanks, Jason. Switching gears a bit here, NAACP leadership unanimously votes to support impeaching President Trump. This happened today during the NAACP's annual convention here in downtown Detroit. While the vote is unlikely to have any legislative consequences, it represents a total rejection of the president from the nation's oldest and largest civil rights organization. NAACP President Derek Johnson says the move was completely justified, tweeting just after the vote, quote, Trump's misconduct is unmistakable and has proven time and time again that he is unfit to serve this country. Top leaders within the NAACP have long been vocal critics of the president, especially relating to his stance on race and his recent attacks of four freshman congresswomen, including Detroit's own Rashida Tlaib. Tlaib called for impeachment again yesterday, and today the president continued his war of words. Listen uh, to what he had to say. Yeah, I'm not going nowhere. Not until I impeach this president. This Talib, Talib. <laughs> From Michigan, right? It's a great state. We, we won Michigan. There is no way she stands for the values of the people of Michigan. But I watched her this morning. She's vicious. She's like a crazed lunatic. She's well, Rashida Tlaib issued a statement this afternoon, and it reads in part, quote, when was the last time President Trump talked about policy that benefits working Americans? He knows his policies and values are not in line with most of Americans and instead is using rhetoric to distract and incite hate and bigotry, end quote. Meanwhile, a handful of 2020 presidential candidates are going to participate in the NAACP conference tomorrow. Eight of the Democratic candidates will take part in a presidential forum. Four of those candidates are heavy front runners for the Democratic nomination, including Senators Kamala Harris, Elizabeth Warren, and Bernie Sanders, as well as former Vice President Joe Biden. Well, tonight, DTE is working to restore the power that was lost after the storms of this past weekend. Uh, we've got a look at video of the restoration efforts under, going on right now. Initially, uh, more than half a million customers, 600,000 homes lost their power. Right now, DTE says they have restored it to more than 547,000. So that means about 50,000 people still waiting for the power to come back on. So let's transition then to weather, which is what caused it all to begin with. As we take a look outside, uh, the views from Mount Clemens and the Detroit sky cams. Uh, be nice to a few drops there on the lenses. Let's uh, see what's coming in here with, with what's going on here with Ben. ben. Yeah, that is. Uh, uh, th those are raindrops. In fact, we're seeing more than a few out there on four live radar. There's a line of thunderstorms moving through, and I know that makes a lot of folks nervous after what we went through this weekend, but we are not anticipating any severe weather. There still may be enough oomph in these storms to get wind gusts to the 30, 40 mile per hour range. In fact, that line right there, uh, just about five minutes ago north of Ipsy, the radar was picked up 40 mile an hour winds. Now that was a little bit off the surface from the radar that's at the airport, uh, but still nevertheless doesn't take a lot to get that to pull to the ground, especially with those downpours that are occurring. Also got this in from Lyon Township on storm pins. There's hail in some of these thunderstorms that came in about 30 minutes ago, uh, so we'll be watching for that. Patchy fog late once the evening storms move out and they should be done well uh, before midnight. Normal numbers again tomorrow as the heat starts to build and get set to sweat over the weekend. We'll look at those numbers for Saturday and Sunday. In just a few minutes, guys. OK, Ben, we were expecting a decision today, but instead it will be at least nine more weeks until we know if former Michigan State President Luana Cage Simon will go to trial. Nick Monticelli caught up with her this morning. Do you think that this is going to go your way? I have no comment. 
Well, of course, Simon right now is charged with lying to police officers, misconduct in office, and impeding a criminal investigation, all tied to the Nasser case. And after seven days of testimony, this first round of hearings is finally over, and now the judge will decide if there's enough evidence to send the matter to circuit court. After the hearing, we asked Simon's defense attorneys what they prefer if this does go to trial. Do you want this in front of a jury? Absolutely. I think it should be in front of a jury. And if it does go to trial, which again, I don't think it should, uh, it will be a jury trial. Why is that? Because we're going to request the jury. Uh, and uh, she ought to have a jury of her peers uh, decide all of this. Well, next, both the prosecutors and the defense attorneys will submit their written arguments to the judge. But again, uh, while we thought a decision might be forthcoming here perhaps today, we're now learning we should get the judge's decision in late September or early October. So already a very long matter yeah. gets even longer today. Let's see what Lester Holt and his team are working on for NBC Nightly News coming up after we're done. Lester joins us live from New York City with a preview. Lester, good evening. Hey, good evening, Kim and uh, Devin. Tonight we'll take you to the private island where billionaire Jeffrey Epstein allegedly took young girls, plus a new ad meant to discourage teens from vaping. Yeah, Lester, so the FDA, they're rolling out uh, some new ads, I believe, or some new PSAs. Yeah, world. some. Yeah, the whole idea is to give uh, an estimated 3.6 million teens and preteens who vape last year a little bit of a wake up call. The idea behind those PSAs is to stop a growing epidemic. We're going to tell you more about it when we see you on NBC Nightly News. You're growing like mad. All right, Lester, we'll see you about 20 minutes from now. Thanks. Still to come, ice cream just tastes better in the summer, I think. Yeah, I, th I think Has you to. might be right. Yeah. <laughs> but if you indulge too often, you may be getting more calories and artificial ingredients than you want. How to put a healthier spin on your favorites. That's next. Detroit's morning team is together again. Rhonda's back. I'm back, Detroit. And you've told us that you couldn't be happier. Thank you, Detroit.